In a surprising turn of events in South Africa's recent elections, former President Jacob Zuma has re-emerged as a formidable force. His newly established Unkantawi Saizwi MK party has not only exceeded expectations, but has also significantly dented the support of the ruling African National Congress, ANC. The Unkantawi Saizwi party has harnessed Jacob Zuma's enduring popularity and leveraged the ANC government's failures to resolve persistent issues like load shedding and water crises, as well as their perceived neglect of the Zulu traditional leadership to ascend to prominence in KwaZulu-Natal, Zuma's home province. This documentary delves into the rise of Jacob Zuma's Unkantawi Sizwe MK party. The narrative of this political surge is closely tied to the story of Jacob Zuma himself, a towering figure in South African politics. Jacob Zuma, who served as president of South Africa starting in 2009, has been a key player in the nation's political arena. Born in 1942 in Nkandla, KwaZulu-Natal, Zuma's political career has been intrinsically linked to the African National Congress and the anti-apartheid movement. Zuma's presidency was marked by significant political and economic shifts, but was also marred by controversies and legal challenges, most notably the state capture scandal, which exposed systemic corruption and the exploitation of state resources by powerful business interests. Join us as we explore the rise of the Unkantawi Sizwe MK Party and the enduring legacy of Jacob Zuma in South African politics. In 2018, Jacob Zuma resigned, leading to his then deputy, Cyril Ramaphosa, assuming the presidency. Ramaphosa, known as a reformist, promised to address corruption and restore integrity to South Africa's institutions. Despite Zuma's resignation, his influence within the ANC remained strong. The conflict between Zuma and Ramaphosa exposed deep divisions within the ruling ANC. Zuma's supporters accused Ramaphosa of targeting him for political gain, while Ramaphosa's camp saw Zuma as an obstacle to necessary reforms. This internal conflict ultimately led to Jacob Zuma's imprisonment in July 2021 for contempt of court after he defied an order to appear before a commission investigating state capture. Zuma's arrest sparked violent protests and looting, further destabilizing South Africa. After his arrest, Zuma was released on medical parole in September 2021 due to health concerns, a decision that sparked controversy and legal challenges. Despite his release, Zuma continued to face various legal battles, including charges of corruption, fraud, and money laundering related to a 1999 arms deal. Against this backdrop, the MK Party, named after the Umkantoe Saizwe, the apartheid-era military wing of the ANC, was formed. This party aimed to capitalize on populist sentiment and dissatisfaction with the ANC leadership, seeking to revive Zuma's political influence despite his legal challenges. The MK party quietly entered the political scene in the summer of 2023 and was officially registered with South Africa's Independent Electoral Commission, IEC, on September 7, 2023, by Jabulani Kumalo, the party's founder. In mid-December of the same year, the newly formed party gained significant attention and support after former South African President Jacob Zuma announced his endorsement for the party in the upcoming 2024 elections. This endorsement led to a rapid increase in the party's membership, with one million new members joining within the first two days following its launch. However, this move raised concerns as Zuma was still a member of the African National Congress, ANC. The ANC expressed discontent with the new party's use of the MK logo and name, issuing a formal letter of complaint to Jabulani Kumalo. Meanwhile, the MK party's manifesto outlined its stance on various critical issues facing South Africa, including challenges in healthcare, education, economic inequality, and national security threats. The manifesto also emphasized the importance of strong traditional leadership and foreign policies, pledging to bring about significant and positive changes. Additionally, the party declared its intention to expropriate land without compensation and transfer it to the state or under the custodianship of traditional rulers for use by black farmers. Early on, a poll conducted by the Social Research Foundation suggested that the ANC could potentially lose nearly half of its support in Zuma's home province of KwaZulu-Natal to the MK party. The same poll indicated a significant decline in ANC support in the province dropping to around 25% from 54% in the 2019 general elections. In contrast, the MK party was polling at 24% at the time, indicating a substantial impact on the ANC's support base. 
In the early months of 2024, Jacob Zuma intensified his public engagement efforts, hosting a series of public events and small-scale rallies in KwaZulu-Natal and Hauteng Province. Zuma actively sought support from Zulu chiefs, offering promises to enhance their status and seeking their endorsement among their subjects. Notably, the MK Party rallies featured the singing of historic struggle songs and songs critical of the ANC and its leader, Sira Ramaphosa. The party's message resonated with some South Africans, as evidenced by its strong performance in several February 2024 by-elections in KwaZulu-Natal and Mpumalanga, where it secured a portion of the vote from established parties such as the ANC, EFF, and IFP. Interestingly, Jacob Zuma's involvement with the MK party seemed poised to expand beyond mere support. This was confirmed on April 16, 2024, when the IEC announced that Zuma was listed as the leader of the MK party, replacing Jabulani Kumalo. Just 10 days later, the MK party's leadership expelled Jabulani Kumalo and four others, branding them as rogue elements and emphasizing the party's ongoing efforts to cleanse itself. Throughout this period, the MK party faced numerous legal challenges, primarily from the ANC. The ruling party questioned the legitimacy of the MK party's registration with the Independent Electoral Commission, IEC, over a procedural matter. In the same month, the ANC sought a court order from the High Court in Durban to prevent the MK party from using the MK name and logo. However, on April 22nd, the court dismissed the case, allowing the MK party to continue its use. Simultaneously, the party grappled with legal battles concerning the validity of Jacob Zuma's candidacy. On March 28th, the IEC confirmed an objection to Zuma's candidacy due to his 15-month jail sentence for contempt of court during the state capture hearing in June 2021. According to the South African Constitution, anyone sentenced to more than 12 months imprisonment without the option of a fine is ineligible to serve in the National Assembly until five years after the sentence is completed. As a result, Jacob Zuma was barred from standing in the upcoming election on May 29th. Despite this setback, the MK party reaffirmed Zuma's leadership and continued its campaign efforts. South Africa headed to the polls on Wednesday, May 29, 2024, in a pivotal election that would shape the country's political future. The African National Congress, the long-ruling party, faced one of its toughest electoral battles yet. As election results began to emerge, one of the biggest surprises was the performance of Jacob Zuma's MK party. In a viral pre-election interview, Zuma claimed he had gone underground to campaign and promised to shock the nation. True to his word, his party delivered a stunning blow to the ANC, drastically reducing its support from approximately 57% in the 2019 parliamentary vote to just 40%. This significant drop meant the ANC would now need to share power, likely with a major political rival, an unprecedented situation since the end of white minority rule in 1994. While a potential coalition between the ANC and Jacob Zuma's MK party seemed possible, many political analysts considered it unlikely due to the probable demands from MK, such as replacing President Cyril Ramaphosa and absolving Jacob Zuma's legal issues. Zuma is set to stand trial next year on corruption charges related to a 1990s arms deal. Only the future will tell. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.